University of Idaho, and thank you for participating in our press conference regarding Vandal Football Conference affiliation. Today's announcement will be given by President Chuck Staben. After the announcement, questions will be taken. We'll take questions from the reporters here in the room in Moscow first. We ask you to be addressed, then come forward to the microphone to ask your question. After that, we'll transition to the phone for questions. We have about 20 minutes for this press conference. This time, I'll turn it over to President Chuck Staben. Well, thank you, and thanks everyone for joining us. With me are UI Athletic Director, Dr. Rob Spear, and head football coach, Paul Petrino. I announced today that the University of Idaho Vandal football team will accept an invitation to join the Big Sky Conference, pending State Board of Education approval, starting in fall 2018. While I understand the magnitude of this decision and the strong opinions that surround it, I am confident that the Big Sky Conference is the best possible choice for our football program and for our student athletes. Moving football to the Big Sky is also the right choice for our students, for academic excellence, and for the long-term success and stature of the University of Idaho. We are, first and foremost, the state's leading residential and research university. The University of Idaho's prestige and relevance will be complemented by our football program, not defined by it. We will be defined by the institution-wide success of our individual and societal impacts, measured by our entire student body experience, our academic and research impact, and our statewide engagement. While the passion and dedication of our student athletes has been consistently strong, UI has always been one of the lowest resource FBS football teams and therefore has struggled to achieve a winning record during our time in the FBS. To become successful enough to affiliate with any FBS conference would entail unjustifiable, unsustainable expenditures. Competing as an independent with an extremely uncertain conference affiliation would be irresponsible, particularly when we have the alternative of joining one of the most prominent and stable FCS conferences. The Big Sky allows us to renew traditional rivalries and offers our athletes the opportunity to excel at the appropriate level of competition, just as they do in our other Big Sky sports programs. Conference stability is important to the future of Vandal Athletics. We can't provide stability by hoping another conference will ask us to join them or that an FPS conference might be realigned in the future to better fit U of I. U of I has a long history of success on and off the field as part of the Big Sky Conference. Playing geographically close and similar schools allows for exciting, successful football, much like we have seen in our other athletic programs. Finally, we have spent a significant amount of time considering our football conference options. In fact, the right football conference affiliation for UI was something I was asked about during my interview process over two years ago. Since the Sun Belt announced in March that it would move forward with a 10-team league, we have engaged in dialogue with stakeholders statewide, listened to opinions on all sides of the question, and analyzed the input. Joining the stability of the Big Sky Conference will provide our student athletes with the best experience and the best path to success. Providing the best possible experience for all U of I students across all aspects of university life is our responsibility and our privilege. Moving to the Big Sky is the right decision for the University of Idaho and for our football program. I am encouraged by the enthusiasm and dedication in our football program, and I am confident that we are ready to move forward, and we would be happy to stand for questions. Thank you. We'd ask you to come forward to the mic to ask your question, identify yourself. Oh, I'm taking a video. Uh, President Staben, uh, I'm Michael Sean with the Moscow Daily News. So when, next, uh, when, when this decision was officially made, and have you reached out to the uh, Big Sky Conference? I already talked to Commissioner Young Bowie. Uh, yes, thank you, Michael. Uh, we made this decision shortly after, well, during last weekend, and, uh, and began the announcement process. And yes, we have discussed this with Commissioner Fulton, Fullerton uh, already and the Big Sky presidents. Uh, we think it's a good decision. And, uh, and we're ready to move forward, and they are ready to move forward with us. Um, did, did the May 4th deadline uh, add any pressure, uh, make you speed up your decision, and, and did you ask for an extension from the conference? The Big Sky Conference, like you said. 
Michael Sean, no, we did not ask for an extension of that May 4th deadline. As you may know, the Big Sky is considering a number of members, and at this point, Idaho has essentially a guaranteed uh, acceptance into the Big Sky, uh, pending State Board of Education approval, which I fully anticipate. And so, um, so that deadline um, was one that, that we wanted to meet. Do we have other questions from the room? Yes. Uh, John Blanchett from the Spokesman Review. President Stephen, obviously you said this was a, uh, a, there were a lot of opinions on both sides of, of this. What are you going to do? What are your plans to reach out to the people who were pretty adamantly against uh, this move? Thank you, John. Yes, we, we've certainly received uh, opinions for and against this particular move. It's one that, uh, that there's a great deal of passion. I think the important thing for all of our alumni and supporters to realize is that that passion is very important. It is perhaps what distinguishes uh, vandals, the incredible passion they have for the university. And they can take pride in our football program as we move forward and as we continue to provide the great student athlete experience and the great student experience that we have for 127 years to this point. I'm confident our alumni will line up behind us and support our students and support our student athletes. Uh, this question is for uh, Dr. Spear. Uh, as far as Title IX compliance goes, uh, what does this mean in terms of uh, eliminating sports and have you, have you reached out to those coaches whose, whose, uh, coaches, or whose programs may be eliminated? Ralph, go ahead and take that. Well, thank you for the question, Michael, Sean. As I communicated with the president, we have no plans at this time to eliminate any sports at the University of Idaho. Does that, does that mean uh, as, of, as of now you'll be in compliance with, uh, with uh, all Title IX uh, obligations, even if you uh, drop down to big staff? Yes, we will. Thank you. I need camera, so. I'm just going to be really loud. Uh, this one's for Coach Petrino. Just how do you handle this transition? Obviously, scholarships will be affected. What's the move here in the next couple of years for you personally and for your student athletes? Uh, I think, first of all, my, my number one job as the head coach is to graduate student athletes. So that, that's where everything starts. Um, we've done a great job since I got here of improving our APR from an 838 to a 957. Um, our first year here, we graduated 75% of our student athletes. Our second year, we got it up to 83. And this last season, we graduated every single student except for one. Um, next year, by December, we have 24 seniors next year. They'll all be graduated with the exception of three, and they'll all graduate in May. So that, that's where it starts out. Um, the second thing is to bring in 18-year-old um, young adults and watch them grow and help them become successful 22-year-old adults, you know, and move forward and become successful men. And then the last thing is to develop them as better football players. So my job really doesn't change. That, that's what my job is. I'm going to go 100 miles an hour to do all those things. And so we're going to make sure we bring them in, we graduate them, we help them grow and become better men, and then we put the best football team we can. And I'm very excited for our team next year. I think we're going to have a great team, and um, I'm just going to move forward and keep doing my job as hard as I can. So are you not worried too much about 2018 right now with scholarships? No, you're worried, and that's why it's good to have a two-year plan to get there. But um, by by having the two years to get there, we will make sure that we're where we need to be scholarship-wise, so that first year we can go into the you know into the playoffs and, and be successful there. Dan on KIBI in Boise. Uh, this question is for Mr. Spear. Uh, as far as scheduling goes, how does this affect with the Power Five conferences that you already have on schedule in the future? We will need to evaluate that. We've had conversations with some of the schools. We've been very upfront about our situation and we'll proceed as we are going to move in to the Big Sky in 2018 and we'll adjust that schedule accordingly. Uh, follow up question with that. Could there be a possibility in the future of renewing a rivalry with Boise State down in Boise? I'll take that one. We would love to renew a rivalry with Boise State at this point. That is uh, renewing that rivalry is something that will require cooperation of both schools, and we're certainly ready to cooperate on renewing that rivalry. Uh, 
All right, we'll transition over and take some questions from the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, over the phone, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then one. You will hear a tone indicating you've been placed into queue, and you may also remove yourself from the queue any time you're pressing the pound key. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star and then one at this time. One moment for the first question. Our first question is from the line of Dave Southern with the Idaho Statesman. Please go ahead. Uh, this question is, is for Rob. Um, I wanted to ask uh, what, what is the plan in terms of getting the scholarships to the number that, that is required in the SDS, and, and what is the plan for that as of right now? Dave, we have worked with the NCAA. We've worked with the NLI people. We are very confident as we move forward. The NCAA views this, it's black and white. To be eligible for the playoffs, we have to be at 63 scholarships. We have a transition plan. We'll be able to accommodate the needs of our current football student athletes and also ensure that we're going to replenish the program for the future from a recruiting standpoint. I would simply like to add, if I may, that the NCAA has assured us that normal transfer rules apply to our current student athletes. And, and so we anticipate that those student athletes will stay here and they'll want to stay here to participate in the great football program that Coach Petrino runs and the great academics that they're engaged in. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star then one. A follow-up question from Dave. Please go ahead. I just want, yeah, I want to follow up uh, with, with my sister real quick about is, is there a plan to get down to that number by a certain year is it, you know, in time for 2018 or where, where will it take us a little bit beyond that? Well, I think it's why we're transitioning over two years. Dave, we will be at 63 scholarships in 2018. And there are no further questions in the queue. All right. I was question for Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, when did you let your team know, and uh, what was the reaction from the players? I let them know this morning. We had a we had a team meeting this morning at eight o'clock, and you know the biggest thing that we talked about is we finished spring ball with a lot of excitement. Felt like we really played well, and we're going to go into this off season. First of all, I got to finish really strong these next two weeks for finals. You know, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about we're going to have a great summer and really focus on on having a great season next year. And that's you know we'd had a team meeting. Uh, prior to this, just talking about the momentum that we have and how we're moving forward and how we're really excited to have a great season next year. And, and I felt like the, the response to the team meeting was very well. And right now, this whole week, I've been meeting with each player individually. And um, that'll continue through today and tomorrow. And, and I told the freshmen and sophomores, because really the junior and seniors, nothing changes for them. But uh, a lot of the, the freshmen and sophomores that if they need to talk more one on one, that they're going to come and meet with me more throughout the week and on the weekend. Yeah. And a follow up to that, a lot of people were advocating for the FCS move, were advocating for that because it, it may ensure you know more success uh, at, at that level. Does that put more pressure on the program to succeed right away when you get into the big sky? Um, I, I don't look that far ahead, to be honest with you. I'm looking for next season. The next season, I'm looking for us to be successful next year, and that's what we're really excited about right now. Sean Kramer with the Spokesman Review. Um, this one's for Dr. Spear. Um, I want to kind of go back to the boosters, uh, especially those ones who advocated for FBS. Um, you know, Staben, uh, you know, has an optimistic view of it in the future, but in, in the short term, is it going to be difficult to keep those guys on board? You know, the, the rules of the game changed, Sean, when we got into FBS. And you have autonomy, you have full cost of attendance, you have all these different things are happening. You have rules change to allow conferences to participate in conference championship games with just 10 members. So the game we, that we signed up for has changed over time. And as you've heard the president talk about, it is really impossible for us to afford to stay at that level and be competitive. And I'm about the student athlete, the student part first. And I think it's really important that we embrace the academic integrity of this great institution because when we provide a quality degree from this institution, that's a lifetime changing situation. And I hope that our 
supporters understand the core mission of this institution is to provide a great education. We've got some work to do. We've got to engage them and get them back, but I'm confident that you know, we are going to continue to look at options. We are going to continue to be the best that we can be, and, and really what we can do right now is control what we can control. Um, I know one thing that, that you and, and President Saban are trying to really get down here is, is a basketball arena, an event center. Do you think this will have any impact on that? I'll take that one, yes. The arena is our, our top fundraising priority at this point. We think it's critical to uh, uh, the improvements in our basketball program that we want to see. I think it's a great example of, of how we want to invest, and we hope that others will join us in investing in the future of Vandal Athletics. Uh, recent development that I think is extraordinary was that our students levied upon themselves a facilities fee to support that basketball arena. Clear our students want a great residential experience, one that offers great Vandal Athletics and excitement on campus, and this, this move to SES is, is related, is really part of that. And we, we need to, to do that, and I'm, I am quite confident we will be able to do that, to build a basketball arena. Looks like we have time for one more question. We have someone who hasn't asked one yet. Uh, Theo Lawson with the Lewis Intervene. This is for uh, Chuck Staben. Uh, from what I understand, you guys hired an outside consulting firm to, to weigh your options. What did the results from, from that study show, and uh, did, did you guys make your decision based on those results? Yes, uh, we, we, Sean, we did hire an outside consultant and we received a consultant report. Uh, those results uh, were consistent with most of the information that we had received ourselves in the past. Um, and, um, and, and therefore, we used that report, we used input from boosters. Frankly, I've met with other college presidents, with commissioners, with the NCAA. This has been a long process and that report was only one small part of that process but the information we received from the report was consistent with, with the decision that we've made and with the bulk of the input that I received. And uh, one, one more for Paul. You, uh, you accepted a job here when, when the school was an, an FBS school. Are you prepared to make the transition in two years when, the, when Idaho drops down to the SES? Yes, I am. Looking forward to it. One more? Yeah, I'd like to, to ask uh, Mr. Staven, um, a lot of college football people on the outside would, would think that this, the you know, first time this has ever happened, uh, would think that this is not a good thing. Um, but seeing your position, how would you be able to, what, what would you say to those people that this is a good thing? It's never happened before and, and one would think that it's not a good thing. Uh, thanks for the question. Actually, uh, colleges have made decisions about their athletics programs that are, that are somewhat similar. The one that is probably the classic is the University of Chicago choosing to leave the Big Ten in 1946. Now, it's been a long time since 1946, I appreciate that. But, but really the decision was somewhat similar. The decision then and the, our decision today is that we want to focus on the student athlete, we want to focus on a great experience for those, for those people who come here to play football. We want to ensure that every time our students step on the field, they will be competitive, that they will have the opportunity to excel. Our, our student athletes in all of our other sports uh, are competing successfully for championships in the big sky. We believe our football team can do that in 2018 and beyond and, and, can, and can get our, our student, our football athletes can get great education here as all of our other students do. So we think this is not actually a, an unprecedented decision. It's motivated by the same factors that have motivated decisions at this university for 127 years and have motivated other schools to make somewhat similar choices. Not frequently, but it has happened. All right, wrap things up, I think. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you, members of the media, for joining us. Um, members of the media, I do have copies of the President's statement. If you would like to take one of those with you, it will also be available on the U of I website. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.